you know, I think it's cliche to say that uh, your team is a work in progress, uh, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, we are, I think, the epitome of a team uh, that is a work in progress, some for good reason. Um, you know, we've had a, a bout with COVID that, uh, that uh, set us back, and we've had our share of injuries that we're still recovering from. So, um, so we're still settling into our identity as a team. And, um, this is the first time since I was in college that I remember having a team with 15 scholarship players. And so even though we have uh, some significant returnees back, um, there still are some things you have to work out inside of your team to become the team you have the potential to be. And so we're, we're, we're really in the middle of that. And uh, I think we're trending up right now as we speak, um, but uh, we certainly do have a long way to go. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question for Coach Lanier, please put that in the chat and we will read that uh, question to Coach. Um, Coach, as you, you look ahead to the start of uh, Sunbelt Conference play later this month, uh, how do you assess uh, Sunbelt men's basketball and what are you most looking forward to uh, about the conference season? Well, I'm not really looking forward to it right now, to be honest with you. Um, you know, obviously we got three games before Christmas. But I know, like I think the rest of the coaches do, that uh, that it's a great league with tremendous coaches, great talent. Uh, and in particular, I'm excited. And I think I can speak for the rest of the coaches that our league has established that it has a bright future. You know, with realignment uh, being what it is, uh, there's so much uncertainty throughout the country on what these leagues are going to look like going forward. And from program to program, from a recruiting standpoint, you're trying to sell your future. And I think the Sun Belt has established that it has a really bright future in all sports. And so I'm excited about that. In terms of the league this year, um, there's no easy games. There really hasn't been since I've been in the league. And, but I, I think top to bottom in my third year, this is the strongest that the league has been. With so many veteran returning players so many great coaches, um, good rivalries that get to stay intact. I, I think it's an exciting time for Sun Belt basketball. And uh, and to be honest, I do look forward to it. I just don't have the mind space to really think about it too much right now. We uh, have a media question from uh, Brady Wheeler. And uh, he says, uh, Coach, even if uh, results have not gone your way to this point, uh, has it been a beneficial out of conference uh, schedule for you? Well, I, I think uh, you can always gain something, you know, um, and I like that we have a standard here. We're five and three and disappointed. I like I like that about being at Georgia State. Um, it's part of the reason why I wanted to be here. And so and we still got some great opportunities in front of us between now and the time we open up conference play and we're getting better right now. And if we get better. Uh, as the year goes on, then it's all good. And uh, certainly we want to play our best basketball when it matters the most. And it all matters, but there's going to come a time in February and March where it matters more than any other time. And we look forward to that. Hey, Coach, you talked about the depth of your team and the amount of guys back. I think you guys have 12 letter winners back from last year. I know you've got your whole starting five back from last year, although you've had some injury um, stuff in the beginning of the non-conference. Um, how does that influence your expectations? I know you guys are preseason favorites um, in the preseason poll as well, heading into, not, heading into our conference season. Well, I mean, I think when you talk about expectations, I mean, we, we say to our team all the time, you know, you're always starting over. Every, every you know, every team has a one-year lifespan. So this team is... Uh, on its journey and uh, whatever's happened in the non-conference is a part of that journey, us becoming a team that this group as currently constituted can become. And so we really do have to grow each step along the way. Uh, you know, we got guys out that will get back. We got guys back who haven't been back for long, who have to get better. Um, and and we're, we're trying to grow. Um, and so we know they're going to be, if you just look at the scores in our league, um, you know, our league already has SEC wins and wins against other really good uh, non-conference teams. And so um, it, it, it is going to be exciting. And uh, 
certainly we got to continue to improve. And then kind of looking here at the end of, of your non-conference schedule, you've got a couple of big tests coming up with Mississippi State and Georgia Tech. What are having those, those big games um, here in December, um, right before you get into conference play? How does that kind of set you up for, for your conference season? Well, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily look at it in terms of how it sets us up for the conference. Um, I look at it as an opportunity to create memories for our team. And um, anytime you get a chance to go on the road and play an SEC program, you got an opportunity to, to do something special as, as, a, as a group. This, this group who's only going to be together once. So tomorrow is a great opportunity for them to do something special. Uh, the same thing when we go across town and, and, and play Georgia Tech. And I think that's true of most of the schools at our level because we've got teams in our program that can win these types of games. And, uh, we haven't played our best, and I generally go into most games expecting to win, and we haven't been ourselves. So we've just been trying to get right, and uh, I feel like we're trending in the right direction, and I think tomorrow is a great opportunity for us. Coach, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Pensacola as the home of the Sun Belt Tournament, and uh, what do you like about the, the atmosphere there for your student athletes and your fans? Yeah, I was, I was impressed. I mean, you have to understand that uh, last year was my first tournament. Um, so I'd never been to New Orleans. I had only heard what that atmosphere was like. Um, based on what I heard about New Orleans, Pensacola was better, and we were in the midst of COVID. So I can only imagine that it will get better, that uh, it's more uh, entrenched in our footprint, and more people can get there by car, um, and I thought the fans, uh, I thought the organization and the field, uh, I think tournament atmosphere is a big part of a conference's identity uh, and the experience that makes it special. And I felt like under normal circumstances, which we, I think will be closer to that this year, that we've got the potential in Pensacola to create a special tournament atmosphere. And I'm hoping that will be the case. But if last year was an indication, I think we're on to something. Coach Lanier, thank you for your time and, and for joining us this morning. Thanks, guys.